All right, all right. Welcome to the revolution of one TK's two cents. Today, I'm going to talk with you about how to lead and how to learn. So we're going to go ahead and dive right in with tweet number one. Your first thought each day should not be about a politician. The first question on your mind should be about your potential and what you intend to do about it. In the opening scene of the Matrix film, there is a character named Trinity who is alone in a room. And you have these police officers who are surrounding the area. And Trinity, unbeknownst to these police officers, is one of the most dangerous people on the planet. And so they bust into the room and they say, hands up, freeze. And Trinity responds to these guys as if she is about to have a whole lot of fun dismantling them. And you see her begin to dissect and destroy these guys in an, with an impressive array of martial arts moves. Meanwhile, the scene splits back to outside and one of the agents calls up the lieutenant and he says, have you found the girl? And the lieutenant says, ha, I've got a whole squad of guys taking care of her right now. I'm sure these guys can handle just one little girl. And the agent says, no, lieutenant, your men are already dead. Basically, he was letting the brother know that you have chosen a self-destructive starting point for trying to solve your problem. How many of us do that in life? How many of us get preoccupied with problems that are very real? but we adopt a self-destructive starting point for dealing with them. If the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning is some word that a politician mispronounced, your men are already dead. If the first thing you think about when you wake up in the morning is some anti-liberty policy that a politician is endorsing, your men are already dead. If the first thing you're thinking about when you wake up are people that are on Twitter or any other space on social media saying polemic, controversial, or idiotic things, your men are already dead. Howard Thurman said it best, ask not yourself what the world needs, but rather what makes you, live, makes you come alive, for that is what the world needs, people who have come alive. And if your first thought in the morning is about anything other than that, your men are already dead. I like to talk about this concept that I call your zone of power. Your zone of power refers to those activities that make you wiser, stronger, and more creative. So for instance, when you choose to read a book, that book is making you more competent. When you choose to focus on your health by exercising or by making changes in the way you eat, you are becoming a healthier version of yourself, a stronger version of yourself. When you are doing something like trying to learn how to write, trying to wrestle with that difficult process of taking abstract ideas and boiling them down into concrete, coherent, concise statements on paper, you are becoming a more competent person. All of these kinds of activities and more, that's not an exhaustive list, all of these activities and more are part of your zone of power because when you do them, you become a person that is more capable of having a positive influence on society. The primary goal of life is to figure out what are those things that get you in your zone of power and to stay in that zone of power as much as possible. But the world teaches you to do the opposite. The world says, hey, no, 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 no. I want you to spend all your energy reacting and responding to what this person is doing over here. Somebody's saying something really controversial over here. I want you to think about that. Somebody's saying something that's making everybody mad and everybody else is mad. I want you to focus on that. And that's not your job. Your job is to begin the day by figuring out how you can get in and stay in your zone of power. Why? Because there are negative things out there that demand our attention. There are negative things out there that we have to do something about. But the only way we can have an impact on those things is if we react and respond to them from within 
our zone of power. And so if your first thought each day is about the negative stuff out there or the potentially negative stuff out there that politicians might be saying or that they might be doing, you are neglecting the opportunity to be able to actually do something about that stuff because you have given up your zone of power for the sake of focusing on someone else's power. And you know what the most important power is? The most important power is not someone else's, it's yours because you can't do something about what other people do with their power unless you are in touch with your own. You wanna be a leader? Start by taking charge of your own mind, your own focus. Start by taking the lead on your attention. When you wake up in the morning, don't give that power away to anybody. Be the leader of what your mind focuses on. Unless you are a politician, please don't spend the first fruits of your day focusing on them. Take your power back. That's how you do something in the world and make a difference. Let's go to tweet number two. When you can separate the lesson from the lesson giver, you remove the limits from your learning. So I saw something interesting the other day. Someone posted a quote by Killer Mike, and it was a really good quote, man. It was a quote about thinking beyond the typical partisan talking points. It was a quote about being willing to work with anybody that's making the world better, regardless of what party they're from or any of that kind of stuff. And it was just a great thing, a great lesson. And someone responded by saying, oh yeah, it's a good idea, but I, I wish Killer Mike you know, lived up to it more. I wish he was you know, a little bit better like this in his personal life. And they spent more time and attention on how Killer Mike might not be living up to his own philosophy than they spent being inspired by this valuable, beautiful philosophy. How easy it is for us to do. How easy it is for us to approach content as if our primary job is to be the critic of the lifestyle of the person who is distributing the content. I would encourage you all to be a little more selfish, to be a little more interested in your own well being and success. You are free to be as critical of other people as much as you want to be. And I have no desire whatsoever to go meddling around in your life telling you who you can and cannot criticize. If that is your joy, have at it. But I encourage you to put yourself back into the equation and use your ability to think critically for the purpose of saying, how can I take this person's content and use it in a way that's gonna bring benefits to my life? How can I take this person's content, even if they themselves are not living up to it and using it in a way that can make me live up to my own potential? Because at the end of the day, it's not going to be about how good you are at criticizing other people's hypocrisy. It's going to be about how good you are at taking the tools and resources that are around you to make the best possible life for yourself that you can make. If you're angry about hypocrisy, do something about it. Become a great person by taking good ideas and using them to make yourself better, even when other people are not doing the same. That's a wrap, y'all. That's all I got. TK's two cents. If you receive value from these posts, like on them, comment on them. Let me know what other things you'd like to hear me talk about in the future and feel free to share it with a friend. That's how you lead. That's how you learn. Peace out, y'all.